so, so thank you for the introduction and thank you. I'm very excited to come here and speak here. I've been uh, trying to follow the work that is coming out of here and very excited about seeing um, kind of very fresh ideas that, that are relevant to the work that we're doing. Um, I'm, I'm teaching at uh, Shankar College in, uh, in uh, Ramat Gan, which is uh, just outside Tel Aviv. Um, and, and I'm volunteering with uh, an NGO called uh, the Public Knowledge Workshop who's, that is doing uh, work on uh, civic engagement and government transparency in Israel. Um, anyway, um, what I'm going to talk about today is a theme I've been working with for the last decade or so and developed through my years in, in uh, New York. I uh, spent five years in New York between 2005 and 2010. Um, and this is kind of a theme that, as a designer, um, I've been working with um, for, for many years now. So, um, I'm going to discuss the theme of interface and maybe the politics of interface through um, the communication cycle, uh, the idea of, uh, of protocols, and, and then I'll try to suggest um, interfaces for resistance and ways ways for, for that to be addressed as well. So when we're talking about life online, you know, we have the, we, we have the, um, uh, all of the euphemism, it's uh, distributed, it's open, and it's in interactive, participatory, democratic, social, emancipatory, right? At the same time, uh, when we're talking about online life, we're talking about destructing, controlling, intrusive, abusive, uh, repressive, shallow, like all, all of these terms, uh, all, all of these uh, hopes, all of these, uh, uh, concerns um, when, when it comes to online life, um, we, we meet them through the interface. The, so, so the interface is, the, is this point um, of interface between, between us and all of this technology, right? Um, it's, it's at the heart of the, uh, of, of the debate. So what is interface? Um, so there are ma many definitions. The, the one that I find uh, uh, interesting is a common boundary or interconnection between systems, equipments, concepts, and human beings. Um, this is one of many um, um, many definitions, but but I think um, one part of of it that that I, that I think uh, makes sense um, and communicates specifically is this idea of common boundary and interconnection. And, and the, this idea of, 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 of the interface being something common, something that we share, something that we connect through, uh, implies some kind of uh, relationship we, between these, uh, these uh, system equipments, concepts, y y human beings. So, so, and it doesn't imply necessarily um, uh, a level of, of, um, of control. It doesn't, it doesn't imply... Um, that, 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 that one side should be stronger than the other or, or so on. Um, and, and it has to do, you know, this idea of commonality is something that has been discussed uh, through media studies um, and before for, for many years, this idea of mutuality and uh, interconnectedness. Um, and, you know, the, the, at the core, the, there's this idea of the classic, the classic model of the communication cycle. Um, we have, um, it's, it's like in Sesame Street, right? You, I have an idea, I talk to you, you have the idea, you have an idea, you talk to me, we both have idea. The, the, now, now the two of us have two ideas, how great. Um, so, this is Stuart Hall. In 1980, he wrote, uh, he wrote a paper called Encoding Decoding. And at the, at the heart of, of, his, um, uh, of his paper he w w was this uh, uh, critique of, uh, of, this, um, of this communication cycle. He was, he was saying that this is, th this is actually not the way it works. He, he called it, um, he, he, he said that th this is basically too, um, uh, too simplistic. What is happening there is, is a bit more complex. He, call, he called this textual determinism. Because because uh, th this idea that that will be um, that that one side um, can plant ideas kind of 
a drag and drop into the mind of a different uh, of another person that's that's not how communication actually works any 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 try to focus on the process of how a communication happens and, and he said first of all there's encoding I have an idea I, I uh, encode it into uh, into a different form uh, in the in the case of this illustration into speech so the idea is turned into sounds um, so the, this body of knowledge is in, encoded into sound, and the sound is, or is definitely not the body of knowledge. Um, and as long as we have a meaningful discourse, uh, as long as you can hear me and understand my funny accent and so on, uh, if, if you're in the back and you can't hear me well, then we don't have meaningf meaningful discourse and there's room in the front. Um, but, but, the, but the point is that the, this is assuming you can actually hear me, right, and and, uh, and understand me to uh, to an to to an acceptable level, and then there's the process of decoding, um, decoding sound uh, through listening in this case um, into a new body of knowledge. So this, so if in Sesame Street it was like I had a triangle and now you have a triangle, so I have a triangle and what you have is not a triangle anymore. Um, it's different. I don't know what it is. You don't really know what I had <laughs> in my brain. Um, the, this process, but both the encoding process and the decoding process are creative co uh, processes. It's pro processes where the, the, the information changes. And I, and I was really interested in that. What Stuart Hall was, uh, was uh, uh, writing about, uh, about television specifically. That was, uh, in 1980, that was the medium that was um, uh, being uh, researched and, uh, and there were a lot of concerns about what does uh, te um, television do. And he referred to three types of code. He was saying one way of, um, of decoding is through a dominant or hegemonic code. So the, the recipient de de decodes the message using the, the same code it was encoded in. So uh, 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 as is, basically. Uh, as, so think uh, weather or sports broadcast, or, uh, or certain type of, uh, of uh, um, radio talk, uh, like radio hosts, okay? That, that, uh, that whatever they say uh, is, is being accepted um, as is. So when I'm, when I'm listening to, the, um, uh, to sports forecasts, for example, I don't ask myself, well, they, they said it was a touchdown, but is it really a touchdown? It's, it's not really relevant. Um, in some cases, it, it, it is relevant uh, to, to question the message, but, uh, but the hegemonic code would, would be c kind of accepting everything that, that is there. Um, the negotiated code is more critical, yet not completely dismissive of, of the reading. Um, I uh, think, I guess, the NPR, okay? Um, so, so you don't, you, you, NPR uh, claims it doesn't have a liberal bi bias. You know it has a liberal bias, um, but, but, but you, you see yourself as intelligent en enough to spot it, okay? Um, but, but it's still useful. It's still useful to listen to it. You, you, you know, you, you, you take what, what, uh, what you can get. Um, and then there's the oppositional code. So the oppositional code, the, in the oppositional code, the message becomes an opportunity to deconstruct the code. Um, think a feminist reading of uh, Little Red Riding Hood, or uh, oh. the Sex Pi Pistols, uh, God Save the Queen, or, uh, or the Hitler Gets Angry meme. Okay, so we know that uh, what, what the original me message was supposed to be, but we use the, the we refer to the original encoding uh, in a in a in a completely different way. Most memes actually are uh, somewhat oppositional. And for me, um, I'm, I'm really interested in what happens wh when it's when it's not. Um, conversational television. What happens when communication is structured through interface, and specifically web interfaces? So when, w when the message is encoded, when, when we see an, a, a message on, on the web, 
Uh, it's encoded through, through interface. So we all uh, celebrate and enjoy how, um, how expressive uh, the internet is uh, and how expressive the tools of the internet are. Um, but, but this expression is in the level of creating these web pages, right? Um, when, when it comes to the decoding of, the, of these message, messages, it's basically the same idea. You, you get the message, you decode it, you understand what you understand from it. So far, pretty much the same model. The thing is what happens when we're trying to encode our message to the, to the internet uh, or to, to, the, to a web page. Uh, when we respond to, to the system or the website, it is always through the system's dominant interface. So, so if, if interface is, a part, is, a, is an important part of how we communicate with, uh, online, um, we don't actually get to choose uh, what interface to use. We, we, we basically work within the constructs of the, of the interface that we were given. And I'll give you an example for, to make it a bit uh, um, um, more um, um, like simpler to understand. So, so this is from a, a friend of mine, Leila Al-Khaddad. She's a Palestinian blo blogger um, and journalist. And she, she tried to order flights, uh, flight tickets for, on uh, British Airways. Um, and she, you, you all probably came across this drop down. What is your nationality? So she's looking down the list to find her national nationality, and under P, there's no Palestinian nationality. Um, and Dalia is uh, has been there. She's been there, been there, done that. Um, so the the interface demands the, this uh, this level of of obedience. It's like. This is who, uh, who you can be, but, but, the, but the interface actually also teaches obedience. Because if you come into a problem like that, you know, that's where you call, um, you, you call the, the company support, right? Uh, so she called uh, the support of British Airways, and, uh, and the, the person on the other side was, was saying, uh, okay, I'm looking in my system, and in, my, in that person's system, there was another drop-down menu with no Palestinian identity, so, or, or, or nationality, or, or passports, or documents, or whatever. So it's, even, even when you, you talk to a human, that conversation is kind of uh, mitigated through, through, through the interface, um, in, in, that case, in, the, in, in that sense. So um, the, the same dominant interface was there as well. Um, Lisa Nakamura, uh, who's, uh, who's researching a lot of uh, uh, how uh, race, uh, race online basically, she calls it uh, menu-driven identities. <laughs> um, interfaces that limit and define what we are allowed to be. Uh, th think how many years it took uh, for Facebook to accept different types of gender definitions. So it's the same thing. It's like, why is that a drop, drop down menu? Why can I only be one of these things, right? Um, yeah, so, so let's talk about protocol. Um, to understand the role of user interface, uh, we need to dive deeper into, into, into the communication protocol. Um, this work is inspired by uh, by the work of um, Alex Galloway and, and other um, thinkers on, the, on this topic. But, um, but specifically, I'm, I'm trying to, to think uh, what is different about the web in that sense. So when, when we're talking about um, traditional media, um, we, we're talking about centralized protocol, broad, uh, broadcast, one too many. That's a consistent protocol. So, so television is always one too many, okay? Um, same with newspapers and, and broadcast radio. The, the, the fact that it's consistent uh, means that the question of the interface in, in the television case is not, it, it's not that big of an issue. When you understood the interface of, uh, of, of the television, uh, you understood it's con consistent, you can move on. Um, same with uh, an interactive um, protocol like telephone, right? So this is a one-to-one, -one, it's interactive. But, but it's still a consistent protocol. It's a protocol that doesn't change every time I pick up the phone. Um, when, we, when we're going uh, um, to digital media, we have uh, different kinds of protocols. We have email, we have chat, we have uh, uh, networked uh, games, we have voice over IP, 
Um, and all of these, uh, in this example, all of them actually have a consistent protocol. When I'm sending an email, I always need an address. It should be at something and so on. The, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not getting every email trying to ask myself, what am I su supposed to do now? <laughs> um, and when, when talking about uh, protocols, um, the, there's the, the idea of the seven layers of the OSI model. Um, so the, the OSI model is kind of technical, but, but, uh, but the, the things we, sh we should care about, uh, the, the, this is the, the protocol of the internet, the, the different layers of the protocol of the internet. The, there's, um, we, we have the internet protocol layer, that, that's where the TCP IP lives, that, that's basically <laughs> how um, packet switching happens and, and, and uh, um, ba ba basically, everything that we know about the internet being um, networked and so on uh, happens there. I won't get in too much into that. But the top layer of the, int uh, of, of the OSI model is the application layer. So, so that's where we have our different applications, uh, like email clients, voice over IP, network games, and so on, and also a browser. So when we open the browser, I, I think something slightly different happens. Cause the, the, the browser's protocol is flexible. On the web, uh, the protocol is basically a, a question of interface. Every web page basically adds another uh, la layer of, of protocol, another layer of, of possible control. Um, and I, I would suggest that, uh, that the OSI model needs to be updated with another layer um, it, when we're talking about the web uh, with a layer of interface specifically user interface. Uh, if, if in the application layer we're we we are using a browser, um, th then, then we can get different kinds of, of applications that, uh, that, that really change the way we should think about, uh, about control and communication <coughs> online. And we have to, to, to take into account the interface question is a governance question. It's a, it's a question of who sets the rules, who, who is supposed to be abiding by these rules, what is the process of making rules. So you've probably noticed that the, this is kind of a media studies uh, inspired thing and, uh, and I tried but I couldn't uh, resist including Marshall McLuhan. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, so le let's listen what he has to say. We are in the middle of a tremendous clash between the old and the new. The medium does things to people, and uh, they are always completely unaware of this. Uh, they uh, don't really notice the new medium that is wrapping them up. They think of the old medium uh, because the old medium is always the content of the new medium, uh, as movies are, tend to be the content of TV. And as books used to be the content, novels used to be the content of movies. And so every time a new medium arrives, the old medium is the content, and it is highly observable, highly noticeable. But the real, real roughing up and massaging is done by the new medium, and it's, it, it is ignored. That, that's, you know, his classic spiel. Um, um, the, the old medium is the content of the medium, new medium, so the books, ha books have become the content of film. Uh, film have become the content on t of TV, and then TV have become the content uh, the content of the web, right? Um, well, not only, right? Um, basically, there's a lot of things going on on the web, um, not just uh, not just the previous medium, N not just the old the, the medium. So, uh, for uh, in in a sense, we can say. Um, the, 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 this is what um, what McLuhan meant by uh, the medium is the message, um, but that but that's only true as long as the 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 medium has a consistent protocol. Because because I, I would say that that the medium the medium is the message when we're talking about the kind of 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 media that we have today, we can think about it as interface de determinism. It, it kind of determines that the, by, by pointing at, at the medium, we are also pointing at the interface. Um, maybe the interface is the message. Maybe that's what McLuhan actually meant. He, he, never, he, he just never thought of, of, me, of media having uh, different interfaces, which is what we have right now. 
Um, so uh, uh, the, the, the me, me, maybe uh, the message and the rules uh, that, that govern it becomes ambiguous uh, as uh, when when the when the interface kind of changes every time, and and this is. Um, Obviously, all, all kind of adopting from uh, from McLuhan can only go so far because I don't really share his techno determinism. But uh, but 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 basically, this is um, kind of a response to him. So I, I, I'd like to bring up another very uh, important and influential thinker, Donald Rumsfeld, <laughs> um, trying to make the case the, for the war in Iraq and referring to the question of WMDs. Um, Rumsfeld went on, a, on an interesting philosophical um, 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 statement uh, that you probably remember. Uh, there are known knowns that are things that we know that we know. There are n known unknowns that are things that we, don't, uh, that we know that we don't know. But there are also unknown unknowns. Um, there are things that, that we don't know that we don't know. There are things that are so far from what we can even imagine, and that's a good reason to go uh, to war without proof of WMDs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and <laughs> now, now when, um, <laughs> when, when Slavoj Žižek uh, saw, saw, uh, came across <laughs> this, it was too tasty for him to, to ignore, and uh, he enjoyed the rhetoric, but, but, he, but he said, Basically, uh, this is great, but Rumsfeld forgot the, fo the fourth option. There are unknown knowns. What about the things that we don't know that we know? Uh, so this is the, the, the real reason for the war. Uh, the subconscious, that's where ideology c happens. And Zizek actually r writes about the fact that that's where design happens. That, that's, that's how design works. Design uses the unknown known, the things that we don't know that we know. Um, Things that work on us without us knowing, and I would uh, I would add that's how interface works. So uh, wh when it comes to to um, uh, user interface design and usability, um, I, I think uh, Steve uh, Steve Krug would uh, would agree. Uh, but the discourse in interaction design is trying to keep the unknown uh, to to keep the the known unknown. So so. I, the, the, the fact that we don't know that we know uh, is kind of good for, uh, for interaction design, at least in the, de in the professional debate. And, and Steve Krug uh, wrote one of the Bibles of, uh, of user interface, and, and this is its title. Don't make me think. I'm sure some of you have come across it. And um, it was published in 2000 and widely quoted and vastly translated book that has framed a lot of the discourse about the role of interaction design as lowering the cognitive load to a minimum. And, and that is actually, you know, le let's put things in perspective. That, that is true um, to a certain degree. Um, one of the terms that we speak about in interaction design is, is affordance. Uh, affordance is how uh, interfaces or, or how tools communicate um, what, you can, what you're expected to do with them. Um, so, so, but, but, but then the, the question should, that should be asked is, is it what attention do we afford? Or, in the case of the web, how is our attention being afforded? Because when attention becomes the most um, uh, rare uh, resource on the, on the internet, um, we, the, the, the attention is becoming something, so something that we uh, we are uh, we both use our attention, but our attention is being used. It's being afforded. It's becoming a currency uh, on the web. So we've established that, that there are quite a few political issues involved, and and we are not as uh, when we're coming to a site, we're not uh, too much in a position of affecting them. Um, so so how can we b basically try to think of of interfaces for resistance or, or resisting the, the, the paradigm of the interface. Um, so I would s suggest a, definition, a, a division of tactical resistance, strategic resistance, and logic, uh, logistic dis, uh, resistance. So the first, you know, the, the first, uh, a, 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 around the so-called web 2.0 in, in the middle of uh, around 10 years ago, um, 
there was a, s a lot of excitement about, about user-generated content. They're asking us what we think. How amazing is that? Um, and and the, it's like authorship all of a sudden can happen because all of a sudden the content of, of the web is not just content, it's also interfaces that would allow us to create content. <laughs> um, that, that's when, when the interface is kind of enough to allow, uh, is kind enough to allow us to express ourselves. Uh, so that, I would call that the, f the, uh, the first depth of authorship. The second depth would be uh, context. So user-generated co context. Think about mashups, embe em embeds, and um, uh, th this is built build into, into the web uh, protocol. Think of uh, taking, um, you know, um, Craigsli Craigslist posting and putting them on a Google map. That was a big deal when it happened for the first time. Um, and, and now the creating the, the context of, of taking this and that and putting them together it is a new layer of uh, a kind of a, a new type of, of authorship. And, and it's, uh, it, th this kind of author authorship is built into the web's protocol. The, the idea that I can take one, one resource and another resource and put them together, th that's how the, wo the web works. Um, and and the, the same flexibility, it, it's the same flexibility that gives us also trackers and ads and, and ad networks. So, so it's not necessarily um, used in, in our behalf, okay? Um, and the third um, option I would suggest would be user-generated interfaces. This is also built into the protocol of, uh, of, uh, of the internet. Um, having users change what the site uh, allows them to do, usually by modifying the browser, mainly with the browser extensions. And, and that is uh, th that the, the idea that you can come to, you can take your browser and you can change it, and, and you, can, you can actually re redefine what this browser can do, is, is something that can extend uh, what we might want to call interface literacy. The, this idea that it's not only about how do I read uh, the interface in front of me, or how do I uh, lower cognitive load, but how do, how do I mitigate the, this political question of governance uh, that, that happens uh, on the web. So one way of, of addressing that is through tactical resistance. So the tactical resistance would happen on the interface layer. This is a subversion of the interface's use. Um, I think the textbook example for that would be uh, Google bombing. So this was uh, um, around, the, uh, around the time of, uh, of the attack, uh, at the beginning of the war in Iraq. Uh, this was a parody of, um, of, uh, of the, the lack of uh, n not finding weapons of mass destru destruction. When, we, when, you, w when you search the web for weapons of mass destruction, you would get that as a first result on Google. <laughs> and that, uh, that happened by, by a concerted um, uh, effort from, from different, uh, uh, different bloggers um, that opposed the war. They all wrote uh, the words weapons of mass destruction and linked them to this page, which, which raised the, the, the Google rank for, for, the, uh, for this page and made it the, 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 the first result for weapons of mass destruction. So t turning, turning uh, PageRank into an interface. PageRank is not supposed to be an interface, right? Or a user interface. Um, so wh what represents the, this kind of tactical resistance is uh, this hit and run. It's uh, limited in scope, for better or worse. It's uh, limited investment, for better or worse. Um, a lot of hacking and uh, culture jamming happen happening in, in, this, um, in this level of resistance. It's, it's about learning how the system works and, and finding its vulnerabilities, taking advantage of the interface, uh, interface's openness. So the interface is open to a certain degree. This is an opportunity. Um, t kind of teaching the system something it didn't know about itself. Um, and most, most of these uh, uh, cases are symbolic gestures of uh, resistance. So uh, uh, protest a action and political art is, is mainly tactical in that sense. The second type of resistance would be strategic resistance, and I would uh, suggest that, that that's the kind of resistance that happens in the application layer. Um, so that, that, that is basically saying, yes, uh, we're supposed to be browsing the web through these softwares. Let's 
try to see how can we change that. How, like, how, how do we change the, the browser itself? So I, uh, I deliberately chose an example that, that is not political, uh, but uh, commercial. So this is Book Bureau. It was a, it's, it's not active anymore, but there are uh, quite a few uh, similar ones. Um, what Book Bureau does is something that Amazon would never do. Um, tell you about it, on each book page, um, where can you find the book for a better price online? And where, and where can you find it in public libraries based on how far they are from where you are right now? So this, we look at that and say, ah, yeah, I need that. Um, none of us would even think to, to in the direction of creating an interface like that because it, that is what we need because we're, con we're completely uh, submerged within the, 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 the politics of interface that we are not a part of. We, we, are, we are not supposed to have agency there, right? Um, another example that is um, the most popular, anybody knows what's the, what the most popular extension uh, on both on Firefox and Chrome? Adblock? Huh? Adblock? Adblock Pro, definitely. Adblock. Yeah, so, so uh, Ad Adblock, Adblock Plus. Um, um, so th this basically, th as soon as extensions become, became a thing on Firefox, mm -hmm. this happened. Because we don't necessarily want to see ads, and in some cases we don't necessarily want to be tracked by ads. Um, this is arguably one of the reasons uh, for, Google for the Google Chrome project. Adblock Plus was one of the biggest um, um, hurdles for, for uh, Google AdWords uh, from uh, extending. And, um, and Google had to be in a position of leverage um, uh, in front of uh, the, the Google, uh, uh, in front of Adblock Plus. It was obvious that that uh, Chrome could not, uh, with all of the uh, uh, the euphemism around uh, Google being a great supporter of, of open source, um, Chrome could not have started with no extensions, and and could not um, uh, could, could not ignore um, AdBlock Plus and say there's, there's no, this is a browser with no AdBlock Plus. Um, but what they did, because they're smart, they um, th they created leverage in front of, uh, ad uh, of Adblock Plus's uh, disruption, and uh, and they they Google pays Adblock Plus. Do you, uh, how many uh, of you know that? Most of you don't know that. So Google pays Adblock Plus to have uh, to change one thing about its interface. To, uh, they've they've added Adblock Plus added um, a checkbox uh, that, that says allow inobtrusive ads. <laughs> <laughs> so, redefining the question of why do we not want ads? Do we not want ads because we don't want banners, or do we not want to be tracked? It's it's completely redefined through through AdBlock Plus now, and one of the reason this is one of the reasons there are a lot of forks to the AdBlock Plus uh, project that don't have this checkbox. Okay. This is also uh, w one of the things that make the c ma makes the claim uh, um, that AdBlock Plus is uh, is blackmailing uh, ad networks. True. Um, How much money do we know? Um, undisclosed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, I, I can talk about it la later afterwards, but the, but uh, th this is I I one of the examples. I can bring up is, is my project together with Helen Nissenbaum and, and Daniel Howe uh, ad nauseum. We basically um, created an extension that work, works with your ad blocker. Uh, every ad blocked by, ad, by, by, your, by your blocker is clicked by ad nauseum. So we're clicking all of the ads on the, on the, on the web, uh, basically flooding, uh, flooding our pro the profiles that the ad networks are constructing and uh, planting a lot of um, um, mistrust between uh, advertising and ad networks. I can talk about it later afterwards. So, so this approach is more of a hit and stay approach. It, it's a larger it has larger scope for better or worse, larger investment for better or worse. Uh, it's about developing uh, kind of alternative services. Uh, it's a deeper and less traditional reading of the protocol. 
Um, the political uh, value here uh, goes beyond the symbolic. It's more than a gesture of resistance. Um, it's a solid resistance to the interface's demand, uh, demanded obedience, a concrete political power to, to be reckoned with. How, and it's harder to make an art career out, out of that. <laughs> Just uh, <laughs> FYI. Um, and the third layer is logistic resistance. And now we're talking about resisting the internet protocol. Changing the protocol is uh, in kind of deep protocols, uh, deep technical pr protocol uh, like the TCP/IP, either through slow bureaucratic processes or through revolution. That's how big protocols change. Um, and a, a hegemonic protocol like the TCP/IP require if you if you get rid of that, you need you basically need to create a new hegemony to replace it. Um, it's a it's a big political and powerful and over often conservative. Uh, process through standards committees, uh, and when one standard is replaced with a with a new one, it breaks everything above it. So, so this is something that uh, is kind of tough. And the example for uh, for um, kind of attempts to challenge the TCP/IP uh, protocol is this. I mean, I haven't seen any. Um, we we basically. We, we basically haven't seen uh, serious attempts to, to say we can go beyond uh, TCP IP. And maybe, I have, maybe you, you are the crowd who, who can tell me, no, you're wrong, there's this and this and that. And I'm, I'm waiting to hear that uh, after the talk. Um, but but, but, but this, this, I haven't, I've seen a lot of uh, attempts for mesh networks and, uh, and, uh, and other things that are actually built on top of TCP IP. Uh, but, and, and none of the approaches that, that basically say whatever was, was uh, invented back um, o almost like ha basically half a century uh, ago is, is, is not the way to go, okay? Um, so Evgeny Morozov, which is both, uh, it's, he's, he can be seen as both an important and provocative thinker and an ar arrogant and violent troll, <laughs> um, um, a bit of both, I guess. Um, he, he defines it as technological defeatism. Um, and th he, this, this belief that since a given technology is here to stay, there's nothing we can do about it or, uh, other than get on with it and simply adjust our norms. And, and I think um, this critique is actually very valuable. There are things that we don't like about the protocols, uh, the way protocols are, uh, are working, but we don't see enough uh, serious attempts to challenge them. It's like this concept that has been with us for 50 years, and it's as if this is the way we're supposed to work from now on. And we, we're getting so so all of this uh, uh, critique of, uh, of of things that have to do with the, with uh, the internet. It's not like. It's only online, it's not real. Like, what do we even need to worry about that so much? But just try to think, how many hours do we spend in front of these screens? The, the, the more hours we spend b around in front of these screens, th this is our real life. This is, this is basically, um, mo mo most of our day, um, or mo most of our work days uh, are in front of these screens, and then, and then we, we, we spend more and more time um, in front of go governing interfaces. So our experience, uh, I, I would say m most of our daily experience in contemplating authority and new rule systems is, is in front of web interfaces. Because when we're talking about the web demanding obedience, it's 24-7, it's right? It's uh, every web page that I open has the, uh, the subliminal question of what am I allowed to do here? And I don't even ask myself, this is the unknown known. This is the, 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 the fact that, that, that I'm constantly, constantly uh, thinking about it, constantly, um, um, n or, or I'm constantly made not to think about it. That is the, the most uh, profound experience of obedience that we, that we have on a daily basis, on a page by page basis. Um, so yeah, 24 seven, around the clock, and not only online. So, they, so these, uh, we can say away from keyboard, um, these dominant interfaces of control, they're, they're not new. Um, and to just put it in context, 
the, we can see some example for, from, for resistance to, the, to, to interfaces on control that are not uh, technological or, or not digital. So for tactical resistance, uh, we can look at, uh, do, do you know this? The, the, so the, this is uh, the, a response to the hegemonic code of, uh, of, of the um, Iranian uh, um, government uh, as part of the, of the Iranian uprising in 2009. Um, the, the, bills were, the, the money bills were used as a form of protest um, and, and with, the, with the writings like uh, death to the, the dictator and for freedom. It, it has become a real problem. <laughs> more and more money bills are, are changing hands with, with political uh, statements that, 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 are, that are against um, um, so-called counter-revolutionary or counter-revolutionary. Counter, counter it gets um, complicated with, uh, with Iran. Uh, but the money is, n money is not supposed to be an interface for protest. But they made it into an interface of protest and nobody's going to throw that to, to the garbage. Even though Ahmadinejad uh, uh, tried to say that every bill that, w that uh, would have a, a, um, a sign like that would not be um, accepted, but, but the phenomena was so wide that they couldn't do that. Um, we can think of strategic resistance, and, uh, and my, my example here is Rolling Jubilee, um, which is um, a very strong hit and stay approach. Actually, I should have updated this. Uh, they, they slide because it's much more than money that they've raised. But what they do is they're basically bailing out the poor. Um, so the way debt, uh, debt works, uh, you buy, um, if, if there are high risk debts, they, they are being uh, traded between different banks and different uh, uh, companies. And they're, they're traded for much less than the debt itself. So this is a, f a fundra um, if, if, but what Robling, uh, Rolling Jubilee does, they fundraise uh, to, to buy debts and strike them. And when this uh, uh, slide was taken, uh, this screenshot was taken, um, just a, a bit more than half a, a million dollars str uh, abolished more, more than uh, almost 12 million uh, dollars in debt. So th this is reading the, the, the interface for, for, the, for the financial system and, and, and saying, we are going to play that game, but not in the same way that it's expected. And this is changing things on the ground. This is, these, are, these, are, these are people who are getting their lives back. Um, and the third uh, layer, the logistic resistance, is, uh, is best um, uh, represented by, uh, by what's been happening in the, in the Middle East. So um, sometimes it look li looks like this, a very hopeful uh, attempt to say, um, we'll plant something new in, in Tahrir Square and, and things would be different. We'll, we'll uh, get rid of that protocol and, and we have our ideas for a new protocol. Sometimes it looks like this, um, a bit more gruesome, and we've all seen much, much more gruesome pictures, which I'm not going to show you here. Um, so my uh, neighbors around the, uh, around the Middle East have had enough of the protocols that govern them. Tunis, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, and others got rid of, of, of their previous protocol, and what we're seeing now can be seen as a protocol war, uh, redefining the rules of play. So to conclude, e even though the, con the conflict is unavoidable, I find it very interesting and quite important to confront. I address it in, in my academic and creative work uh, through different tactics and, and strategies. Specifically, I find the question of interconnectedness to be critical, especially from my geopolitical perspective. Thank you. Thanks, Michon. Um, so I'll open the floor up to questions. Um, I take the liberty of starting. Um, so you've painted sort of this almost uh, tiered or layered approach to thinking about sort of the strategic and the ta uh, tactical, uh, the tactical, strategic, and logistic um, forms of resistance to these sort of uh, the obedience that you've laid out as demanded. Um, I'm wondering whether, and you sort of made a, made a prompt, uh, at least in the online sense, to say that, or with the digital technologies, to say that, um, that 
the logistic, you don't have good examples of, or you sort of are looking for the good examples of it. Um, I want to put. I want to push you to think about sort of why that is. Is one of them easier to do? Is one of them easier to understand? Um, well, is it a technology affordance or a sort of philosophical affordance? I, I, th I think it's it's both and beyond that. It's it's the way the technological world is constructed. Um, the the fact that we are um, we are led into into these new settings, uh, new political settings, by by companies who who have their own interests there, um, and and they are the biggest players um, is 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 a big problem. Um, it it basically uh, puts us in a in a point of disadvantage. I think I also think you know you're lucky enough to you know. To be in the U.S. because the U.S. controls the internet, um, and and we are like, from my perspective, not being a, an American citizen, um, I'm not in a position of, of uh, influence as as you you guys are. You know, we we see we're seeing that with uh, the whole debate around uh, uh, around um, you know Snowden is they're following American citizens, <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> is it okay to follow me? <laughs> Like, like, it's, it's. Yes, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes, because I'm, I'm like closer to terrorism uh, yeah. potentially. Um, but, but it's. Um, the Constitution only protects the citizens. It's definitely not on online. Like, definitely not, not the technological governance that that we built that is built from a certain di a, a, a ideology. Uh, to serve certain ideology, there's, uh, there's so much power involved. But, but the problem is, the reason that, that I referred back to, to on-the-ground physical activism uh, or of the financial system is because my, my concern is that if we don't resist uh, the, the interfaces online, then we don't expect to, re to, to, to resist anything. Because that is where we learn wh uh, how to how to interact and how to, uh, and uh, that, that's, wh that's where we learn what, what is expected from us uh, on a civic level. Um, and and, and that, is, th that is concerning. Um, I can say that in, in the case of, um, of, of the way the technolog technological governance works, um, but we've, we've come across it actually with the uh, ad nauseum, the, um, the project that I mentioned. I, I can actually, if you want, I can play a three minute uh, video for, for the two and a half vid minute video for that, that actually addresses that point as well. Let's yeah. some more questions. Okay. Hello, folks. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, I to, this is more just a resource question in case you have any thoughts. I'm interested in going, certainly, yes. I'm interested to know how the um, enforcement of, or the, the, um, the setting in of the demand for obedience tracks with things like decline in health, um, advancement of problems with the environment, and advancement of things like diabetes and certain other kind of illnesses that are more, you know, sort of, I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at the epidemiology, I'm just interested to know if there's any resources that you know of to kind of track on a very granular, incremental level how the advancement of this kind of um, on you know demanding obedience tracks with other things do you have any sense of where might be I, I don't know I, it's not my field so so I wouldn't know how to research that um, exactly I I'm making the statement I'm making is about political um, imagination to a certain degree mm -hmm. um, that is limited by our our daily um, our daily experience of obedience, but so I'm I'm concerned about uh, about our, our our ability to imagine uh, different relationships, but but I don't I don't know how to quantify that. Let's say okay. sorry. Any yeah. sense of yeah. resources Maybe someone else in the room knows him. I I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I know With interface, yeah. well, well, basically, when we the definition of interface, 
has to do with this connection between um, systems, per people. It, we've experienced the interface for, for so long now and, and, and so um, intensely through user interface that we forgot that. We forgot that, that the, there is no implied uh, hierarchy in the concept of interface. There could have been a web where the, where, where the power uh, settings of uh, site owners versus site users would have not been set as, as hierarchical. Um, so in its core, interface is about relationship and I about interconnectedness, this point of, of yeah, that, that, that's, that's the connection. So I, I would I, I understand your point. I just I, I just think that, well at least the way I'm seeing it, th this is using the TCP/IP protocol. This is what the, the TCP/IP pro pro protocol um, allows. That, that that is basically uh, m maybe not may, maybe not the way we would have wanted or certain bodies would have wanted to use it. Uh, but this is a use of, of of that protocol. This is a part of the problems. With, with that protocol, I would say um, the the way uh, uh, the, the fact that privacy is not uh, embedded into the protocol is another problem with the, with that protocol. Be, beyond uh, be, beyond the, the problem of uh, uh, distributed denial of service attacks or, or other or, or a packet sniffing and and, and the, the, this is the protocol. This is what it allows. If if this is done within that context, that the, this is not challenging. Uh, that, that 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 protocol by by saying here's another protocol right it's it, it's 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 maybe maybe exposing maybe exposing um, um, the the vulnerabilities of the of that protocol but but not necessarily uh, not necessarily um, c kind of directing another way for 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 for, for going beyond. Uh, what the what the protocol allows or d does not allow. Yeah. I saw an oppositional the same way, you know, a feminist reading of red yeah. writing, but it's opposite. Yeah. I, I, I would just put, put it in, the, in one of the layers above the TCP IP um, um, layer. That, but I, I think we understand each other. The question I have is, have to do with your speak of interfaces and affordance and and I do a lot of UX and I do a lot of accessibility professionally for patients and people in healthcare. And these are, in my experience, and this is a question for you, is you said, you know, uh, these interfaces ask us to obey, they push us in a certain direction. Well, just like in the DDoS case, I almost wanted some kind of protocol to save me from these thugs, right? But I didn't have any because I have freedom, quote unquote. But now I find the interfaces that are bad or that are, uh, how should I put it? don't allow you to really um, 
uh, uh, do what you meant to do or accomplish the task mm -hmm. you meant to accomplish, which is what creates that relationship, right? I feel like a lot of that disconnect is sloppiness and not an agenda. Yeah. So the question Definitely. for you, just, I have right an ideal with the U.S. government right now who is forcing me to make it very universally usable. Great, right? It sounds fantastic, but it comes from the government as a mandate, a set of rules I have to meet or somehow prove to have met, right? But it's kind of opposite to my sort of general, uh, natural inclination, uh, being a, a cyber child, to say, no, 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 I don't need you to make me, tell me what to do, I will surpass your requirements, I'll do something very different. So I just, a question of, you know, sloppy versus making it better for everybody, uh, sort of individual choice versus a mandate. So yeah, the, 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 this is, uh, it, if a version of this question was, was, was made to me l yesterday. I gave a talk at, uh, at MassArt about uh, disinformation visualization or how to lie with the data viz. Um, and and my, my argument there w was, was that we should not look at uh, visualization like, uh, like uh, Edward Tufte uh, claims we should look at it as, a, as beautiful evidence. We should look at it as beautiful arguments. Um, and, and, and I think, I think it's, about, it's about the argument. It's not about like interface out there to grab us all kind of thing. Or, or, and I actually, I, I think the Don't Make Me Think book is actually good. Uh, good in the sense that the, the, there is a problem with cognitive load. Um, and, and it's a challenge. Um, cognitive load can, is a challenge for design. But when, when we are so um, obsessed about directing um, um, attention and, and, uh, def and making our users not think, we also forget that, that, that we, are, we, are, um, we, we are representing different interests. There are the interests of the site owners and there are the, the, different, the, the interests of the users. And I think the example of Book Bureau, that's why I like it so much, because the, 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 the difference of interest, interest there is so obvious. Um, wh when we are in, in the position of de designing these user interfaces, we are doing political work. We, we, we are doing work that, that should be politicized. So I'm... I'm I'm not going to politicize, uh, you know, um, bad interfaces. Like it's not about making you think about things that are not political. Um, it's not very. I, I, I don't think people should make uh, crappy user user experiences just so you think about the fact there's a crappy UX designer behind it. <laughs> um, but but I do think that, that that if if the what's embedded. With, within a certain interface is, is, is something that should be politicized, the, the, this should be, the, the, we should change the way we, we think about what we are allowed to do online. Uh, that, that's, that's more of, uh, of the critique that I'm making. I mean, just a follow-up to that, I was just thinking, like, is this, because this seems particularly important now versus say in like 2002 or something because of the consolidation in a sense of attention on the internet. So it seems like this is particularly relevant when you're talking about like a site like amazon.com, politicizing amazon.com is really different than say politicizing my personal blog or something like that because so much of the attention, so much of the data flows, so much of the personal data that is, is captured and extracted on the internet flows to Amazons and Googles and Facebooks and Twitters and so on. So I mean, do you, do you feel like that's part of this politics? Is this current sort of geography of attention and data on the internet? Yeah, time? yeah. It, it's it, the, it makes a lot of difference, but 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 the b basically the 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 playing with context on, on the internet has has changed dramatically as well. N uh, out of the 100 mo most popular websites on, on the internet, 97 of them report back to Google about uh, on everything that you're doing. And it's not like 97 out of the 100 most popular sites are Google sites. 
Um, so even your blog has, um, is, is exposed to these questions. Um, and, and they are, they are usually hidden and not, they don't even uh, expose a user interface. It's, it's just an, um, an implicit interface that by, by uh, browsing the web, you're, you're reporting back to Google and everything because people use, are using Google Analytics or YouTube or Google Maps or whatever. Um, so, so I think uh, we can't actually say um, these, these are only problems in the big sites. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, like, your, the argument about interfaces sort of demanding obedience would be, in a sense, less problematic if there were, or it seemed like you're saying they'd be less problematic if there were more of us producing those interfaces. Like, if, if the task of, like, who's owning the sites and who's using the sites is more equally distributed amongst people, um, is that not? I, I don't think that if all of us build our WordPress blogs, uh, everything would be fine. Yeah. Um, which is happening less and less, by the way. Um, and also mobile, like there's yeah. nothing users or And things. there's Internet of Things, which brings interface to a whole new... Yeah, yeah and, 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 you know, if we continue along the, the previous uh, medium being the content of the new, uh, th th think about the uh, mobile apps and how the, w the web is becoming the content of them. Right. Um, so, yeah, th 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 this is, I, I think it, it has to do with with literacy, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I and I actually think it it has to do with political imagination. Um, like, can we imagine a different relationship? And I'm not uh, I, I'm not making I, I don't think we can't do that because we haven't thought of uh, of challenging the TCP/IP protocol. I think there's a lot to do even even before we challenge the uh, TCP/IP, um, and I'm not trying to challenge TCP IP, I'm far from being uh, in these levels of, of action or, um, or technological levels. Uh, I think there's a lot to do with uh, um, both tactical, uh, both tactics and, and strategies that, that, that are inspiring politically as well, um, and technologically and ux sickly and so on. Questions are all taken. I have another one for you. Yeah, an example I thought of, one that really drives me insane in terms of modern development of design is, so we've all known BBC online, right? We've used it maybe for news, resources, etc. Now, anybody here has an app. It's a mobile app. I mean, it is like back to TV land. I feel even less engaged, less powerful, uh, less able to learn. For example, you can read the article, but there's never related content or links to the embassy of Nicaragua and the embassy of US who are having an issue, stuff like that, right? There's no, there are no sort of comments or, or, or even a name of the person who wrote it or a people who wrote it. And I feel like here we are after the 90s and the first 10 years of 2000, after we've seen this culture explode, see this content being created by all of us, see some people percolate up and being new types of journalists, whatever, and now I feel like easily reversed. So I, I have an answer for you that might uh, actually address what you, yeah. what, uh, the, the answer that I haven't given you. Um, I, I'm working on a, on a client project um, and, and, and there's, there's this, I, I was, uh, th this is public radio in Israel and when I was, um, wh when I was talking with uh, uh, we, with the, 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 the company that built the previous site that we're now redesigning, um, I, I said we will need an API as a part of, uh, of, of the new redesign. And, and the same company was supposed to build the new site as well, and they said, we don't want to build an API for, for, this, uh, for them. I, if we build them an API, they'll be able to, to, to get rid of us. <laughs> and, and I was like, what? <laughs> like I can't believe you even allow yourselves to say that. Um, but 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 it really. G uh, the good news is that this company is not going to build it. So. <laughs> um, um, and and but there is a future that we can get to that is not very far, where inst where we all um, instead of providing websites, uh, we would provide APIs. 
So your blog would would be exposing an API. It, it, it actually was like that. That was our uh, RSS. It, it didn't. Uh, it, we we I, I, th I think when RSS happened um, and since it kind of died, um, it we didn't understand it yet B because technology wasn't there yet. Uh, Ajax was X, the X was for XML. It came after. I, I, I think I think this is still valid, and I think it's becoming valid valid again, like ten years or so after. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that that now there is uh, this need for for us to to expose APIs, um, and um, and and to allow other people to do other things with different interfaces over different uh, data. I, th I think I think this is uh, this is something that that. I can I can see a trend towards that, and that would be a very interesting place for both for uh, data literacy and uh, interface literacy. Mm -hmm. So, where do you think? Just to follow on that. Where do you think this idea? So, when you talk a lot about the literacy, right? So, one approach to the sort of I'm like there are assumptions or decisions or just sloppiness in these interfaces that that restrict what I can do with it. Obviously, the sort of personal response is build toolkits to allow people to build their own interfaces, which you've done. Um, now, does that, d is that primarily an argument or response about literacy, or, or an argument or response to say, hey, like, I was able to make my own interfaces, so now I'm liberated from at least the top layer of restrictions that were imposed on me? Is it sort of a, an argument about utility, or, or a meta argument about like, oh, now I know how to build these things, so I've become empowered in general to think about the assumptions and what I'm allowed and not allowed to do? I I think it's you know you know the answer is both, uh, but 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 I think uh, the only way to get to the first assumption, the one about literacy, is through utility, because because this might be an interesting debate to have, but uh, until it becomes um, an an actual like that that's why I like about book bureau, I need that I use that, I, the, the fact that book bureau not only recommended other places to buy, but actually sent me to my public library, is, is super powerful. It's super powerful. I, it wa I, was, in, I was in a consu uh, consumerist mode, and, uh, and it sent me to a civic mode. Like it, that, 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 that is, um, a, a, and, and, and there was value, financial value and civic value for me there. Um, so so that, that, that is what, and same with Adblock Plus. In a different way, obviously. Well, it's a civic value. Civic value in Adblock Plus, you wouldn't find as much, but but but, but uh, um, it, it, there's, there's value for for it's so, it's solving a problem. It's and and while doing that, it's it exposes the the the, the differences uh, of interest between me and the uh, and the site itself. So uh, so yeah, I, th I think I think there should be there, sh there should be more initiatives. That, that, that do think about services in that sense that are not only, um, not only about um, literacy or a, a political statement uh, about information, uh, but also about, you know, what do people want? Well, I mean, this is the difference between your ad nauseum example and Adblock Plus, right? True. Like, like, Adblock Plus is providing utility for me and has none of these sort of like activist endpoints, right? Whereas your ad nauseum is providing utility if, if it does the blocking or piggybacks on the blocking, but then it's making this aggressive stance to say, hey, I'm also going to try to disrupt the system that I'm checking out of, mm -hmm. rather than just checking out of it. And I think a number of the tools that you mentioned or that I can think of in my head are more of the I'm checking out of this, yeah. rather than the I'm checking out and I'm trying to like mess it up for everyone else. So, so th that's a problem that I have with the privacy debate. It's super depressing. Like th there's something, we didn't go online to, to hide. We, we go online to communicate, we go online to uh, express ourselves, to, it's supposed to be, it, there's, we enjoy that, it's, it's fun, it's social. It's, the whole privacy debate, and uh, it, it, it gets people to, e to either uh, hope for the best, or um, know that you're th that you're being fucked, but that's just how it is. Or you you're 
um, it, it, you're tech savvy enough to to encrypt every every little thing that you do and to use exactly the right set of tools to to circumvent uh, any attempt of, uh, of of data being collected on you by someone who you don't know and there's something so so machoistic about this <laughs> this thing and super depressing it's no fun I'm, I've never enjoyed protecting my data <laughs> and until uh, and, and, and until we've started to to you know to go the the complete other way with ad nauseum the whole idea is that we want to be expressive let's be super expressive let's be let, let's celebrate it let's perform it let, and to tell you that if you, if you want me to tell you that that it's a a solid uh, um, way of uh, avoiding um, data collection? No, it's not. It's definitely, it's not going to compete with, uh, with the latest encryption uh, uh, algorithm in the next uh, data security conference. No, but, but, it, but it is trying to compete with, it, with, with this idea that security is something for, for, for um, activists, kind of extreme activists or terrorists or, or uh, uber geeks or, uh, or whatever. It's, it's something, it w we need to change the language uh, around that and, and come from that, that point where, where people want to be, that, that expressive point. That, 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 that is playful, that is kind of, um, it, and it's also, it, it's not only protecting myself, it's actually inflicting pain on, uh, on the, and, and, and getting back to the, to the point of, uh, of leverage, which is what we're lacking there, because the background of, uh, of um, um, ad nauseum is the failure of the Do Not Track Standards Committee. So, so w the, the, this is exactly the the, the political um, process that did not give give us a, a, a valuable uh, or or a valid solution. And well, the solution is completely is there, right? Um, do not track is a, is a, you, you can basically already on Firefox you can already check a, a checkbox even in Internet Explorer you can check a checkbox that says you do not you do not want uh, websites to build a profile on you um, the only problem is that they don't ex don't respect that uh, that's what the committee was w was built to to set to set the rules uh, of how how is this checkbox is going to be respected. Um, but apparently, three, three years after it started, um, the companies sitting on that, uh, on that uh, committee are there to make sure it never, it, it never, um, it never leaves the ground. So okay, so, uh, so time's up. Um, so thank you, Mushan, for coming and speaking to us. Thank you very much. Uh,